Hi guys, in this video we will be looking at MIP 2602, but first we will review uh, February, March, February, I mean January, February 2024. So let's read the first question. Read the scenario below and answer the questions that follow. The property agency is trying to determine the average selling uh, price per square meter. And let's see, per square meter. And the size of, of accommodation for all residential properties in Margate, uh, Kwazunadali, of the 200 and, oh, in Kwazunadali, then there's full stop, of the 235 residential property sales in the area recorded so far this year by agents. The property square agency has analyzed data on the basis of the deed of sales document. Below are the, de are the details of the three residential property sales that were recorded so we're being told that there's 1060 1167 3152 and 1383 so far right so we have a selling price we also have the size of the accommodation in square meter what is or are the random variables of interest in this scenario well the, the random variables in this scenario guys remember it's your it's your selling price as given here, as well as um, the size of accommodation in square meters. So these are our, our, our variables in this, um, in this given data. So it will be the selling price, then the size of accommodation. Remember, we're not talking about the variables. We're also talking about the independent variable and the dependent. Even if you put this in the graph, you will see what I'm talking about, right? So... Our solution at 1.1 will be um, the, 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 the selling price, the selling price of residential properties and the size of accommodation in meter squares. So what is the population of interest in this scenario? Um, in this scenario, uh, the population of interest, guys, remember... When you think of population, you think of the number of people in this case, right? So, but we are, since we're talking about the the the, the, the properties in this uh, data, so it will be it will be uh, the, the it will be all residential. It will be all residential properties in market. It will be all residentials uh, properties in market meaning the 235 properties sales in the area will be our uh, our um, our population of interest in this scenario i hope you are writing that um, just showing you in question one how to analyze question one guys right it's very important uh, in this video i will not write too much but um, i'm more of explaining on how to tackle uh, question one so uh, we have uh, shown that uh, it is 80 residential properties i mean all residential properties in market in guazuna Dali is you could just say a uh, solution will be like that all uh, residential properties in market in guazuna Dal, just as it's given it's all residential properties in market guazuna Dal. so those that those are the 235 properties sale in the area will be our population interest we are interested on the, on the number of of properties that are there when they talk about the population of interest then at 1.3 what is the sample interest in this scenario well guys um in this case when they talk about the sample they are talking about the small group uh, that is used to draw conclusion about the larger population the small group what is the small group we were told here guys that uh, the property square has analyzed 80 on the basis of deals of uh, of sale documents in other words the data residential properties that will be our sample interest in this scenario because it's a small group that is used to draw conclusion yes so that's how you will have um answered your 1.1.3 hope you are noting i said that it's a data residential properties sales will be our sample space then uh, let's go to 1.1.4 Explain the type of data collected for each uh, random variable in this scenario. Indicate whether the data is 
qualitative or quantitative and whether it is categorical or numerical. If the data is numerical, specify whether it is discrete or continuous. In addition, identify the scale for each random variable. Right, let's put that into practice. Let me start writing at 1.1.4 then. Well, at 1.1.4, remember, they wanted us to explain the type of data collected here. The type of data that is collected here, guys, um, moreover, in uh, selling price, I'll write SP in selling price. So that will be the type of data that is collected is quantitative. There isn't quantitative the reason why i say uh, quantitative it is because it's a data that is measured in numbers and we're given numbers in our data so we're being told that the selling price is um one million two hundred and ninety thousand and blah 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 so that tells us that this is a quantitative data it's a quantitative data so this is a type of data that has been collected here so is it categorical or numerical so it's numerical because we're dealing with numbers so let me not say numbers. Uh, I'll just say numerical. We are dealing with the numbers. So it will be a numerical data. Thirdly, then they said, um, is it continuous or uh, is it discrete? In this case, since it's a quantitative, it will be continuous because it takes uh, any, it takes any within a range, it takes any number within a range. So in this case, we will say uh, continuous, right? continuous uh, please guys when you review for MIP 2602 uh, kindly review the type of data we have uh, so that uh, you understand um, those uh, quantitative and qualitative uh, go to your study guide review those two it's very important guys so that uh, you're able to get this beautiful marks on uh, MIP 2602 on Monday uh, on Monday so that you you, you won't regret study all the types of data so that you, you'll be on the safe side. I hope uh, making sense. So we said it's continuous. It can take any range. It can, it, it, it can take any within a range. Then, then they said um, identify the measurement of scale for each uh, random variable. In this case, the measurement will be the ratios because we are dealing with comparison. So we are going to compare them. So it will be the what? The ratios. The measurement will be the ratios here. Measurement of scale will be ratios. So I want us now to look at 1.1.5 then. At 1.1.5, if the property square agents were to determine the relationship between the selling price square and the size of accommodation, which variable will be identified as independent variable and which variable, um, variable as the dependent variable and which graph will best represent the data collected in this scenario? Uh, give reasons for your answer so which one will be independent and which one will be dependent let's put that into practice well in this case guys uh, the independent i'll say the independent i'll say iv which is independent variables right uh, the independent variable will be um the, the size the size of accommodation The reason why I say the size of accommodation, it will not change, guys. It will not, it cannot be affected. So we can use, uh, take it as an independent variable. You also need to learn what is meant by independent variable and what is meant by uh, dependent variable. Those are very important terms. It's there in your study guide. So don't be lazy. Read, read so that you understand those terms so that when you're in an exam, you're able to, you won't panic, right? So in this case, it, it's an independent variable which cannot be changed. So it will be the size of uh, accommodation will be our independent variable. What about our um, dependent, DV? Obviously, our dependent variable will be the selling price. The selling price, sorry for that. Selling price. The selling price will be our dependent variable it can change it can change it can be affected the, the selling price can change depending on uh, numerous factors that may occur right so um i hope guys have answered uh, uh okay we have, uh, we, have, we haven't we haven't done so what is uh what what is the the the, the last thing oh they said that 
um, which graph will the will the, the will best represent the data collected in this scenario? Give reason for your answer. The data that will um, which graph? Ne? The, the the best graph for this in this case, guys, we can use um, we can use a scatter plot. Yes, a scatter plot can be uh, useful. Can be useful, guys, because um, we will. Uh, we are talking about trends. We, uh, since we are, we are comparing two things here, such as uh, size of accommodation and the selling uh, price, so I will say that um, the, the 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 scatter plot will suit this case, right? At one point one point five. So let me just write, guys, scatter plot. Scatter plot. Uh, the reason it because of uh, it shows the trends. Its correlation. So it will be the scatter plot. Scatter plot is the best graph in this case because we are talking about the trends. So we're also going to compare um, the selling price and the size of um, um, and the size of accommodation in square meters, right? I hope I uh, so hope I make sense, guys. I hope I make sense. <laughs> hope I make sense. Now let's go to one point two. At one point two, they said the curriculum and assessment policy caps require grade six learners to be able to draw a variety of graphs, including pie charts to dis to display and interpret the graph. Use a uh, figure below, figure one below, to answer the questions that follow. So, figure one: uh, beans of different types of waste collected at school during sports day. Note: glass is placed in blue beans, and metal uh, paper is placed with yellow beans, and metal is placed on red beans. Plastic is placed in green beans. Use figure one to answer the questions. Um, Write down the points that you will use to explain to the learners what a pie chart is. Well, in terms of the pie chart, guys, I will explain to the learners that the pie chart is a circular graph divided into slices to illustrate the proportions. I hope you are noting that a pie chart is a circular graph divided into slices to illustrate the proportions or the parts right so that's the 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 the, 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 uh, the significance of a pie chart so it, i said that it's a circular graph divided into slice to is to illustrate the, the the proportions or the parts right so then you will be required to draw a pie chart to demonstrate what a pie chart looks like for 1.2.1 guys i will uh, advise that let's use our our Excel guys. Let's use Excel. Take the you will take the, the, the information, the data here, and place it in Excel. Then you are going to draw a pie chart. So we know that the pie chart is more of a circle. So that will show different parts. So there will be plastic, there will be a um, paper, metal, glass. So use your Excel so that you are on the safer side. Or you can draw. But it, 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 it the best way because it's how many marks you won't waste time uh, to demonstrate what the part chart, chart looks like. So, firstly, you can um, find the sizes uh, and the angles here of of this pie chart so that you're able to 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 um, to draw this graph, right? So, I'll advise that we use uh, Excel. Excel, that's a software, Microsoft Excel. That's a software, so it will help us to get that beautiful nine marks. So, which graph can best repre uh, uh, represent that this data in Figure One? Give reason for your answer. Mm. Uh, for me, guys, I will say it's a bar graph. Mm. The reason is because uh, there is a comparison of categories here, and there is clear uh, clear, vi clear vis visualization. I will say it's a bar it's a bar graph for one point two point two. My reason is that there are comparison of categories. Two, there is a clear visualization. That's how uh, Mr. Richard will have explained that. Right, at 1.2.3, 1.2.2, then use the, 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 data, uh, uh, the data figure one, draw the, the, the graph identify. So you will then draw the, 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 the graph. So in your x-axis, guys, now when you draw, 
at 1.2 um, point 3 when you draw your graph remember at your axis at your axis these are the number of dust beans that you're going to put number of beans uh, then here you're going to put um, your, 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 your plastic your glass uh, your method your paper then you know the graph uh, just for example I'm just showing you an example maybe let's say your graph is like this maybe your bar graph is like this your, your bar graph is like this so remember ensure that your bars are equal and the, uh, they leave spaces that's how a bar graph so let your let uh, let your bar graphs be a separate be separate to each other so that, uh, to show that it's a bar graph so you will have something like this um, this is just a, 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 an example on how you can draw a bar graph but remember to, to write that here number of beans then um, maybe uh, beans uh, types of beans here maybe uh, I mean type of type of waste you can say type of waste here not beans type of waste since we are talking about beans uh, paper so just talking about paper glasses metal so plastic so remember you need to label here label you get a mark and you must have a heading right you must have a heading so that you get uh, that seven marks so that's how you can work out 1.2.3 i was just showing you on how you can answer such right then at uh, at 1.2.4 design questions that will help grade six learners interpret the data displayed in figure one and the pie chart you drew for uh, question 1.2 2.1.2 uh, for example how many beans of glass were collected they showed you so let's uh, let me help you with the question uh, with the questions at 2.4.1 uh, what will ever I answer I will say my question will be what type of uh, waste what type of waste collected Collected the most. Collected the most. Or you may come up with your own question, right? So then I get a mark 1.2.4.2. I'll also say how many more beans of plastics. My handwriting. Ooh, Richie. Of beans of uh, how many more beans of plastics uh, were collected? We collected compare compared to metal. Then I put a question mark. So these are the, the questions that I, I may have um, uh, asked in this question, right? So that's that's the end of question one. Remember, uh, uh, what I will advise is that, guys, study the type of data. And uh, number two, be, a, being a, be able to analyze the, 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 the diagrams. And um, number three, know how to draw a bar graph. Uh, histogram, uh, scatter plot, pie chart. Study the those charts today, so that um, you'll be on a safer side on Monday, guys. On Monday, uh, that's what I will uh, advise. In question one, it's all about theory. Apply that theory, guys. So on question two, we'll look at question two tomorrow, and question three as we are reviewing for our October November 2024. If you are new to this channel, what are you waiting for? Uh, do the right thing kindly subscribe you only subscribe once and remember we love you guys you're on 951 subscribers let's push it let's push it let's let's push it guys by sharing the videos uh, like comment uh, let's make it happen so that you're able to reach 1k as our goal target for now then um i thank you guys thank you for your time thank thank you for watching and uh, wish you all the best in your examination Tomorrow's video will be question two. Let's see what we are going to look at. Let's see what we are going to tackle, actually. We are going to look at question two.
where we are going to work with uh, data handling, the mean mode, the interquartiles, standard deviation. Yes, we are going to learn about that tomorrow. We also gonna look at probability. Then that's the end of an examination. It's only three questions. So we are also expecting that in October, November 2024, just as they did in um, January, February 2024. Wishing you all the best. Do not forget, don't, don't forget to, to, to like the video, comment, subscribe, and remember, we love you.